Now we'll welcome Robin up from Bridgewater Associates who's gonna talk about how they use AWS and some of the latest features from S3 to power their economic models. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Rob. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, my name is Robin Anil. I'm the Director of Research Technology at Bridgewater Associates. Uh, we are a 45-year-old company. Uh, we've been, we are a global macroeconomic investment manager, and we have this notion that we endlessly pursue the right answer to how the economies work. Right. Our founder, Ray Dalio, wrote a couple of books about how economies work, it's pretty famous. And our model of the economy is pretty complex. It's like we try to understand these cause-effect relationships, and it's been evolving for the last 45 years. And the work that we do in our company is called economic research. And the research that we do, we call that timeless and universal, which means that it stands the test of time. For example, for example in the current market, you know there's inflation and we know that the interest rates are going up. Why? There's a, there's a, the interest rates are going up because we want people to borrow less. And these kind of like rules, like we have understood how the mechanisms of the economy work over time. And this is a good video Ray has made about how the economic machine works. It's available on YouTube. I highly, highly recommend you watching this. So at Bridgewater, we take this model of the economy and we write that as code. And we run this model every day. For us, that model of the economy is like millions of lines of code. And it's broken up into several what we call mini models. Every day, a new data point appears. And every day, we have to figure out that the model still works. We apply the new data against our existing understanding of the economy. We, are, we call that forward testing of the model. We also backtest changes. For example, when we think about new ideas on how, like maybe we need to tweak the model slightly, we need to make sure that our model still behaves correctly back in time when recessions happen in 2008 period or things that happened before. We need to really backtest and make sure things really work. We also do a modeling what we call what if scenarios. And what if scenarios are really trying to understand, hey, how, if the war in Ukraine stops, what happens, right? Like, we need to really understand those hypothetical scenarios, so we run those as code, as models in our system. Along with all this, we have to do one more thing, which is we have to operate and in, in markets and trade in markets, because that's how we make money. So we have a production version of the system that is running the production quality version of the model every day, again. Now, AWS-based architecture allows us to do this reliable scale-out of our infrastructure and of our models. To give you a 50,000-foot overview of how this uh, architecture works, we broadly think of our architecture as three buckets. One, a compute grid, a data lake, which is made of S3, and a reporting and analytics system. The user, in our case, is an economic researcher. They're building a model, they write that in code, uh, it's, a, it's a proprietary language we built on top of Scala. They submit that code to the compute leader, which takes that code, compiles it in the built worker, sends that over to the worker pods to run that at scale. It is based on Amazon EMR on EKS. All the intermediate data during that simulation or modeling, we write that into EFS. But the key part is our storage system. All of our inputs going back centuries of data is there in our data lake. We use and store data on Amazon S3. We use Amazon DynamoDB to store all the metadata. And then we use the Amazon Elastic Cache for Redis to accelerate some of the read workloads. This whole storage system is our data lakes, which is used by our reporting and analytics applications, which are these. Uh, visualization and reporting application that we built on top of Amazon EKS. We've recently launched an analytics product on top of Amazon EMR Presto, which directly accesses the data in Amazon S3 and produces insights for our economic researchers. At Bridgewater, if you think about like the data storage needs, we think of in, in certain lenses. First lens, of course, for us is security. Security is paramount. For us, it's important that even the models are isolated from each other, right? We, we want to make sure that different researchers don't know uh, 
uh, how they're working on each other. We do some data, we do some siloing in our company. And that's very important from how we operate because we manage billions of dollars and we want to make sure that access is tightly controlled. We also care about reliability because we are operating and trading in markets. And every moment we are not trading, we, are, we may be losing money. Finally, not, last but not least, it's a cost. We need to make sure while we do all these things, while we make sure our data lake grows, we need to keep the cost in control. But at the end of the day, our users, which is the economic researchers, they care about scale. They want to build new complex models, understanding of the economy, use new forms of data, scale it out, and run this and get their insights. So like I said, we built our proprietary database on top of Amazon S3 as a data store. Our files under the hood, we use columnar formats. Amazon DynamoDB is our metadata store, and ElastiCache is our accelerator. If you look at some of the features that we've uh, used, especially coming from Rob's and Shaki's uh, uh, demos, you saw we use the Amazon customer managed M Amazon AWS KMS encryption. We use a default encryption for Amazon S3. We also use S3 object lock. We never delete any data. It's very important for us Bridgewater to never delete data because we want to go back in time and look at our decisions. We want to know how we were wrong. We also want to know how we were right. So we want to make sure that all the decisions are never deleted and, and we can go back and inspect them. We have controls to ensure security and compliance as we scale to tens of petabytes of data at Bridgewater. On the topic of reliability and consistency at scale, we use a lot of features, again, from S3, including the replication time control with the cross-region replication. We have started using the consistent reads in S3 solution. This went beyond read after write. It's one of the close collaborations we worked hard with the S3 team. We also use the S3 storage lens for analytics because we have a huge data lake and we need to know what's happening. And we've started using the S3 multi-region access points recently to get that cross-region reliability. So our system is designed for full region outage scenarios because we want to make sure our business continues to operate. So to give you a little bit of uh, an interesting problem that we have, we care about uh, consistency not just at a single file level because when we run an economic model, we're creating a sets of files. We call it that like a data set, which includes like n files that the model generates along with what we call as a commit or metadata file that we also write that points to those n files. So for us, we need to make, make sure there's an all or nothing on that entire data set. Especially when we go across regions, we want to make sure that from region one to region two, the entire uh, data set is available. To do this, we use the replication time control hooks to understand the latest timestamp of the commit because we ensure that the commit is finally written as a transactional way. And then we try to replicate it across two regions and we check the second region. The SLA we get from replication time control is 15 minutes, but we typically see the data is replicated in one to two minutes. And this is great for us because in case we have a region loss, our data is only lost by in the last three minutes, and we can recompute it because we can rerun the compute models. This is excellent for us. And on the topic of cost, that, was that uh, life cycle we talked about, it was so easy for us to enable uh, S3 intelligent tiering. And this year, we have went down almost like 35% uh, in cost, while our storage is actually up year over year, 42%. So thank you, S3 team, for that. It was very easy. Just to give you a summary of the size at which we operate, for my team alone, this is just the research technology and there are other teams, we run a 20 petabyte uh, scale S3 with about 120 billion objects, growing about two petabytes a year. So to keep all this in control, we are really grateful for the S3 team to build us these amazing features uh, so that we can manage this at scale. This year, I want to really thank the AWS team overall because through the partnership, we have had almost 2x reduction in our average runtime of our models through the various projects that we work with them, increased our machine utilization. And this is more important for us, most important for us because we have unlocked some frontier research. We could take our biggest models and scale that up 5x. And that's been unlocking for us. So thank you, Rob, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity here uh, to tell our story.